Among those at the donor conference yesterday was Dr. Paul Farmer, well-known activist, medical anthropologist. He was appointed the U.N. Deputy Special Envoy for Haiti, working under former President Bill Clinton. He's the founder of the charity Partners in Health, which provides health care for people with HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, and other conditions in Haiti, as well as eight other countries. He's vocally criticized U.S. destabilization efforts in Haiti, as well as major U.S. corporations that have pursued profit at the expense of global health. Well, on Wednesday, Democracy Now! Producers Aaron Mate and Nicole Salazar caught up with Dr. Farmer at the conference. The biggest problem, as, as was predicted by many, the biggest problem is shelter. So right after the earthquake, and I was, you know, we were there, uh, I was, you know, thinking as a doctor might, you know, what these people, we needed uh, trauma care, orthopedics, all kinds of medical care, as you might imagine, for in injury. We needed relief and rescue efforts. Um, and you needed food, water, and shelter. Um, I'm not suggesting the food and water problems have been solved. They haven't. But the biggest problem is shelter. You know, you have uh, people living in these very precarious circumstances, as you know, and if, they, if it's dry, there are fire risks, and if it's wet, there are flooding or erosion risks. Um, and uh, so that's what we really have to act on very urgently, is trying to help people have better shelter. That's the number one problem right now. Now, what, what, what I would say to an American audience or any, anybody, any thoughtful, progressive, forward-thinking person is, what have we not done so well in Haiti in the past? You know, how have our policies been flawed? How have the attempts to fill this space, you know, you have a flawed policy. Say, for example, uh, you know, you're taught looking at uh, support for um, a dictatorship. You know, I mean, the United States had a relationship with the Duvalier dictatorships for a long time. And you're saying, wait, we don't want to do that. Part of the reaction to that was to only put uh, money into non-state actors, like NGOs and certain contractors. Has that had the results that we wanted? No. Otherwise, Haiti would not be both the country with the highest per capita rate of NGOs in this half of the world and also the least literate. So again, I keep going back to this very difficult struggle about if we believe in the right to health care, if we believe in the right to education, who confers rights? Not NGOs. The United States can't confer rights in Haiti. The Haitian government has to confer rights, the right, at least the right to education, the right to health care. I would also say the right to clean water. Any social and economic right is usually delivered by the, the government, as it was in the United States, you know, when during the Great Depression, you know, you had brisk engagement from the federal government, and I'm sure state governments as well, to try and respond to unemployment, a lack of, you know, housing, a uh, lack of health care, such as it was, a lack of public infrastructure, and that was a good thing for the United States, you know, um, to have that kind of brisk intervention. Now, Haiti does not have the public coffers that even, the, you know, in the uh, uh, lowest point of the depression, you know, Haiti's in a much worse situation than we were back then, even. But that doesn't mean that the friends of Haiti, if there are any, can't say, we'd like to see some of these resources go to building back public health and public education, or building back better, as President Clinton keeps saying. I think it's a good term. You know, I don't like slogans very much, but build back better suggests that Haitians do have something to build on, and I would say that Haitians have the Haitian Revolution to build on. You know, that, that's a pretty glorious past in so many ways. You know, they followed through on um, what other people were talking about, liberty, equality, fraternity. They, they, they banned slavery, and they were the first to do it. And, you know, Haitian, Haitians believe, as you know, that they're being punished for, they were punished for that for two centuries, for ending slavery. You've been involved in Haiti for many years. Um, what's it been like for you to witness the country in the aftermath of the earthquake, personally? Well, um, I, you know, this is not something I like talking about very much, um, and I, I, I think you can understand that for those of us who um, have been working there a long time and are familiar with the places um, and, you know, have roots there, um, it was, it's been very difficult. It's been, I mean, it would have been difficult had it happened in, you know, any place that I didn't know. But to have it happen in the place where, you know, we've all been working or living uh, was it being the loss of, you know, so many lives and so many you know, buildings and especially houses uh, is very, very painful.
and it's just still painful, you know. And I'm I'm headed back there, and I I know that you know there's going to be some of the rubble gets cleared out little by little, but you know it still looks like there's just been an earthquake there, and it will look that way for a while because rebuilding. Uh, after such a colossal catastrophe, it's going to take many, many years. Anybody who tells you today or any other day that they know what they're talking about or dealing with, whether emotionally, logistically, in terms of financial planning, rebuilding, can't be telling the truth because nothing like this has ever happened in the middle of a capital city. Maybe Managua, 1972, but that was, you know, this is many times worse uh, than the other natural disasters that people talk about. So it, it's been it's been personally very, very difficult. And I think um, just the sights and smells and sounds of it have been difficult. And uh, that said, the Haitian people are very heroic. You know, I don't want to romanticize uh, heroism that is, you know, or uh, their resilience. But I have to say, uh, they have been able to pull themselves together, you know, and better than any other people I could think of. And they have a long, hard slog in front of them. We know that just by visiting one of the camps, the temporary settlements. But they ought to at least be able to count this time on having real accompaniment as they go forward in that long, hard slog. Paul Farmer is the U.N. Deputy Secretary, the U.N. Deputy Special Envoy for Haiti. He is the founder of the charity Partners in Health, which is very active in Haiti, as well as a number of other countries around the world. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back, we'll speak with a U.N. Special Rapporteur on the Obama policy of drone attacks. Stay with us. Rayon pisse que poco séché, pas fait d'y fait pour faire manger. Tout c'est ça y'a qu'à faire une toussée, si nous allons figuer une glo coulée, c'est pas qu'il n'a pas crié. Nous sommes la conscience qui campe, qui marche et cap analysé, vend la fille mais qu'elle est méchanceté. La fille mais dit m'le qui saurait ou tendé, la fille mais c'est maître Sky qui commande. La fille n'a pas quitté la personne fâchée pour l'ouvrir porte la pour lui foutre force et aller. La personne qu'on a pisé fois, là elle sous les liens, en détroit pas, sous pitation pas le lycée loi. Parti au grand en coulica, dit Jean-Marie Ti Nicolas, qui t'a qu'à faire le marché au pas. La personne qu'on a, ça veut dire, la vie détruite pour bailler la vie, pas qu'à faire ça pas 